So we just want to let you know that Danny DeVito, who directed the movie Matilda, the great smash hit from in the 1990s, is going to be in concert with the New Jersey Symphony March 22nd at the State Theater in New Brunswick. And it's a beautiful theater. I've played there before. There's going to be a live orchestra, the movie with a beautiful print, and you'll see it live. And then Danny will narrate like he did in the movie live. He'll be there. So March 22nd in New Brunswick, the State Theater, Danny DeVito and Matilda. If you want tickets, go to njsymphony.org slash Matilda or just call 1-800-ALLEGRO, which is also 1-800-255-3476. Dana, this one has one of our old favorites who we both had worked with, Danny DeVito. He was on SNL uh, with you and me. Mm-hmm. He did my very first, I'm pretty sure, Gap Girls. That one only had me and Sandler in it, uh, but he played our boss. And I know he did uh, Hans and Franz with you. Hans and Franz and Church Lady. And he's a five-time host, so he's, he's part of that club. Love Saturday Night Live. He's about as likable a person as you could ever spend time with. There's something mm-hmm. about him that is so sweet and fun. We go over his Penguin character, Batman, um, that was so brilliant and hilarious. The Tim Burton movie, um, Batman Returns, I believe. And um, Oh, yeah, we talk about... Uh, his early days. One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, Romancing the Stone. He had so many... Big, big things. Twins. And then, of course, mm-hmm. we get into Twins, Taxi. Uh, Always Sunny. Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's quite a career. The dude has done a lot, and he produces and he directs. We just talk about a lot of stuff with him, and the guy uh, is a good talker, and he knows a lot about New York and, and when he started, mm-hmm. and then uh, he gets into all those mm-hmm. crazy stories about Jim Carrey, Andy Kaufman. Yeah. <laughs> going to see Andy Kaufman do stand-up. Yeah, a lot of fun stuff. So this is a fun one, and uh, have a good time with them. But I was just thinking, doing this in the 1960s, we might have waited for Yul Brenner to come on. And that would have been fun. Yul Brenner would be the first... Yeah, guest. Podcast guest in 1965. <laughs> We'd follow him up with Steve McQueen. Yeah, you put him on. He does a little dance. Does the accent. He talks about the doing the jump, but he didn't really do it in The Great Escape. Didn't really, yeah. All the all the stuff that he does, you know. Like I had a, an apartment in New York once in the 60s. I got on the <laughs> bulletin board of... Uh, of uh, the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, where I went to school. And, uh, yeah. you know, I was looking for apartments. So everybody was always, you know, scrounging for, like, no money. But we had no money, so uh, they had this <laughs> bulletin board. Anyway, I went to an address, and it was in the weirdest place. It was on Madison Avenue in, the in like, 57th or 8th Street. 645 was the address, I remember. Oh. And, yeah. Wow. And... Uh, I walk in the door. It's a really shitty building. Now it's all, you know, totally told, turned into what New York is, you know. And I I go in the building, and the first thing I saw was a giant picture <laughs> of Buell <laughs> Brenner. <laughs> oh, man. And it was, was a that? little shitty, yeah, a little <laughs> shitty hallway like kind of thing. And mm-hmm. um, anyway, it worked out because I, I got the apartment. It was like the second flight up. It had an elevator actually in the building, but very, 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 very old school. Yeah. And, uh, of course, 60, it was 64 or something like so that. So what was your rent? Do you remember your rent? Yes. $50 a month. $50 a month. And it, and it was a one bedroom apartment and the back and the bedroom was, the, it was a living room, bedroom kind of situation. It had a nice bathroom and a kitchen, and and a and a mm-hmm. uh, yeah. And the bedroom had windows that looked out over the tops of um, uh, buildings in New York. So it was like one of those. It was like if you were uh, doing a play or a movie about New York, and you said like, "Build me a, a, a outside like what the cyclorama would look like," or 
today mm-hmm. what what you would put in 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 uh, you know the background of your movie. <laughs> it was all the stove, you know, the, the, the yeah. exhaust pipes and the tops of buildings and railings and all that. It, like, it yeah. looked like the, you could do you could do uh, West Side Story on the roof. Well, did, did people hang out of the, out, out of their out of their windows, going, "Hey, what's with the well, fucking no, noise over here?" No, no, they weren't doing that. It was like more like it wasn't like enclosed, like like if there were okay. buildings that went up. Because yeah. in that area, you know, at that time, it was just the top. So you had a great panorama mm-hmm. of looking east. Uh, but no, you didn't see a river or anything. I was on Madison Avenue. and uh, But to actually have that address at, at that time was like amazing, fucking crazy. Because I put these other glasses I see better far away. That's a great, right in the heart of Midtown, right? Yes, right in the heart of, and the thing about Mm -hmm. it is that at that time, a lot of people don't know this, Madison Avenue and Fifth Avenue were two-way streets. I mean, you Mm -hmm. guys weren't even born. Uh, Um, Yeah. I was being born. I I go back. I remember Yul Brenner. Look, I mean, you know, David doesn't know who Yul Brenner is. Yes, you remember him, (laughs) but yeah. Oh, oh yeah. But, I remember uh, the King and I was a poster. But if you imagine Madison yeah. Avenue being a two way street and, yeah. uh, you know, you know, New York very well. And Fifth yeah. Avenue also. I used to walk up from 30th and, and go to 57th or 8th where I lived. And uh, it was a two way street. It was really there weren't any horses and carts, though. You'd be happy to hear. You weren't that far back. It wasn't that <laughs> oh, far. good. All right, <laughs> we're in the modern. Were you walking I... around with c- casting call magazine? I was doing uh, what <laughs> we used to get was uh, show business and uh, and what would they go backstage? You remember? Oh, those? backstage. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, See, yeah, You guys did it a whole other way. It was just we'd buy. I would, you know, I was never in the magazine. I we'd buy these magazine these papers. <laughs> That came out once a week, show business and and uh, backstage, and in there yeah. there would be all the casting that was going on. Mm-hmm. 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 And we would, you know, we would go to uh, uh, on the corner of I think it was Forty Seventh and Seventh uh, was uh, Howard Johnson's, and uh, everybody would meet in there. It was like you that you going in, you know, take up space and have coffee and read the. <laughs> To see what the was, latest thing, yeah, yeah, to see what was going on. And, and uh, uh, Danny, did you ever find when you auditioned for these things at the beginning? I found this that you would audition and then you would hear through the grapevine they already have offers out to stars, but they're just looking for backups. Or no, to, no, it's, all, well, it's always it's, the same it's case. That, so it's been that since the beginning of time. And the other thing about like I, I'm talking about auditioning for. Off, off Broadway, mm-hmm. off Broadway, uh, <laughs> regional theater, anything mm-hmm. that you could get, and, and you know, sometimes you get lucky and get a, an audition at the public, you know, uh, and uh, you know, get, get a, a tiny part in uh, Shakespeare in the Park, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it's not li- literally a spear carrier, but you might have a few lines. Like I played once, I got I played the doctor in. Uh, the Mary Wise of Win- uh, the doctor's servant, sorry, in the Mary Wise of Windsor, <laughs> you know, and uh, the best, those were the best shows uh, to get because they literally paid, man. Oh, that was like you would wind up with 190 something dollars a week in uh, in wow. those uh, in in at Joe Papp's, yeah, you know, $200. It was a different contract, that, you know. No strike but, needed there. Yeah, you know, four the, months uh, of rent. Off yeah. Broadway, off Broadway was great, man. Off Broadway was sixty eight dollars a week, seventy dollars a week. Damn, that's what I made on SNL. And if SNL didn't exist then, did it? Did Lord Michaels? I mean, that's exist, what I tell people. Existed. 
<laughs> well, Lorne Michaels has always existed. He was in. A, he was a teenager. <laughs> and he still exists. <laughs> there is no one. What, when, when, did, when, did, when did SNL start? When did SNL start? It's a good question. Seventy five. It's like seventy something. Seventy five. Seventy yeah, seventy five. The fiftieth is next year. Yeah. yeah. Anniversary. Yeah. So I. Yeah. That's the, so seventy five. I was already in California by then. I came. I'd gone through off Broadway and all those things um earlier mm-hmm. and, and and you know uh did uh, children's theater in Massachusetts I've done you know did all that kind of stuff and then I mm-hmm. I got lucky in the uh, in the in 1971ish or two around there and I got a, a part off Broadway and played Martini in Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, and so that applause. was like where there should be fucking you know, applause. Then, then, then uh, I stayed in that play for almost a year. It, it ran at wow. the Mercer Arts Center, mm. and that was cool. And then, uh, uh, then Milos saw it, and everybody saw mm-hmm. it, and I got Milos. lucky and got a you know Milos. Milos and then Vaughn. I got the movie, and then after the movie opened, I moved out. Wait, yeah. Danny, funny. California. My my question was when you do a play, you're not guaranteed a part in the movie, are you? No, you're not guaranteed anything in this. The, our business is you must know this. <laughs> it's not there's no there are no guarantees. There's no anything. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean once in a while like for instance I you could imagine like Brando uh, giving a performance like he did in Streetcar and then yeah. you know that you got to be a, a you know you have to have your head in, head in the sand to not cast him in uh, in the movie. So right, uh, same thing with uh, you know Vivian. They're well, not going to get someone from The Bachelor, and they're not going to like. Yeah, he's going to be uh, the first <laughs> choice. Yeah, I I starred in Hans and Franz the musical. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to hear more about Hans and Franz the musical. Hans and Franz, the musical. What I was going to ask you, Danny, is a philosophical question. Usually when people have their struggling oh. years, struggling years, and mm-hmm. then have hyper superstar success, which I'm going to put you in that category, they look mm-hmm. back at those early years and go, those were some of the best days of my life. Do you feel that? Or did it suck when you look back on the struggling well, years? It, it, I never, I don't, first of all, I don't, I mean, unless I'm doing something like talking to you guys like, or something where you know, you don't think about that as much, but mm-hmm. you, you, you do think like, you know, uh, those days were sh- struggles, but not, you know, not the best. They were not, mm-hmm. the, those were the days. Uh, uh, I, I think the toughest part about that getting started was, you know, like you guys got started, like when you, you know, you, you, you hit television or I don't know what you're, history is but <laughs> how how much you did before before i met you at the, when i did the church lady or something like that. but, wow. but uh, you were there you were you were there yeah okay. oh i remember I there. It, 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 I be, there well you you hosted a couple times it's just so funny and when i did that drum solo in the dress you were egging me on you know and that was my best drum solo <laughs> on television there you so, go. You see, you have to have a coach. <laughs> you were good. I had ten, 10 years of of uh, anonymity before I got SNL. David had David got a movie right out of high school, but um, I know. But then I lost, but then I, Danny. Thank you for asking. I did a Police Academy movie, Police Academy Four, the good one, and go. I and then I came back and turned something down. I thought I was kind of a big deal. And then I lost all my heat for three years and had to grind it back. And it's so fucking sickening to even think about, but it, yeah, you know, it all worked out. But, but like you were saying in the beginning, when you were struggling, I think like all of us, you don't really know any better. And you, you know, you're taking a risk by going into this world of movies and TV and theater. So you can only really look back and think, God damn, how did I get through that? But at the time, hundred dollars is a lot. You get a little part. It's a lot. You know, you're just sitting with your buddies at the coffee shop. It's such a long shot to make it that it's probably once you make it, you look back and go, God, that was tough. But at the time it's tough, but you don't, 
I didn't really notice how tough it was. Yeah, you don't notice it. No, you just well, you're you're focused on like you're you're focused on getting the job. Yeah. So basically, that was what what was going on with me. I was like, I would uh, uh, I would read those papers that you, you know, and at the time, <coughs> excuse me, in the '60s, I I didn't have an equity card, so I just got out of school, and like the way they did it was. You th- you would read in say you'd read in the in in backstage that such and such was casting something, and you go okay and and they're casting over on Fifty Seventh Street, you know by Carnegie Hall somewhere near one of those buildings down the block whatever it was, and casting was you know say Tuesday okay but you didn't get in until the end of the you got at the if you didn't have an equity card they saw everybody. You know, they would there because everybody's looking for the right person to play the part, uh, hopefully. Uh, if And especially if they're not, you know, it's the, the, I mean, maybe they already had the lead cast or that's the way they raised the money or that, mm-hmm. those things. But you would you would wait up in the I'd you go go at like three o'clock, four o'clock in the af- afternoon. And maybe the line was less and you could. uh you know, you you waited, and then in the end, the very end, uh, they would let the non-equity people get in to mm-hmm. uh, to audition, and then they'd see everybody. And as a matter of fact, the first play that I ever got, did I did at uh, in I think it was 1968 or so, seven, the first off Broadway show. Because I had done mm-hmm. regional theater. Well, mm-hmm. uh, I did, toured with a play once that came out of school. That was like kind of cast in. The, we went to two theaters, went to the Eugene O'Neill Foundation, where they, uh, the playwrights thing in 60 something, 64. And, and then like in 68, I, I actually did that. I went to, the, to one of those auditions. And where they make you wait until the very end. And I peeked my head into the, you know, I, it was this big, big door in one of those big old pre-war <laughs> buildings. And like it was, on, I think it might have been on like near 57th Street. And I, I walk up and it's a giant bo- door and there's nobody there because I had gone and come back. The line was really long. And I, anyway, long story short, I stuck my head in. And there were there was an actor, a director and a writer and a producer sitting at a table up really far away in this big empty room. It looked like a rehearsal room. And I just popped my head in like, and, and, mm-hmm. you know, you still, uh, you know, seeing people kind of thing. <laughs> and the actor, was, uh, a guy named Alan Garfield. You remember, That's you know, correct. Alan J- James Garfield's son. No, no, I don't know who's, okay. who his dad was. His name was Alan okay. Garfield, but he was. Mm-hmm. Do you know him, Dave? No, I know Garfield no. the cat. Okay. But... Anyway, look, the guy literally at the table, like <laughs> across the room, turns around and said, "That's the guy who should play the part." Whoa! They were trying to talk him into. Yeah, he didn't want to do wow. this part. It was it wasn't a huge oh. part, but it was a good part. And I stuck my head in the door and the guy and the actor, not the director and the producers and the writer or whatever. <laughs> he said, there's a guy who should play this part. And I, <laughs> I just backed out of the room or something and they came and got me and I went in and I read the lines, did the thing. I didn't, I didn't, I had never seen the script before. Just, you know, that, those things where they give you the cold sides. Read, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got a part in the, in a, in a play called Shoot Anything with Hair That Moves. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Huge success. I just think of the 70s and the films of the 70s and Cuckoo's Nest. (laughs) And, of course, that play. Yeah. Don't shoot anything that has hair. And the the friends that you you made, Jack Nicholson and Michael Douglas – and your your class, right. you, you, those seventies guys, that all became and they're yeah. lifelong friends. 
What what's the deal with those guys? Are they fun or do you like them or they're Jack fun. Nicholson and <laughs> yeah, they're good to work with. Yeah, Jack's the coolest guy out there. Jack Jack, Jack was like a a guy from Jersey. He he actually lived like he was born in this. We were born in the same hospital. Mm. Figure that. Like, well, I'll yeah, be sure. damned. <laughs> and, uh, well, hey. I'll be damned. How about that? <laughs> and, uh, That's what Jack would say. I'll be damned. Born in the same hospital. Yeah. How do you like that? Me and D, <laughs> born in the same hospital. <laughs> uh, I don't do a good accent. Uh, let's see. And then Michael, I met I met actually in the 60s at the Eugene O'Neill uh, mm. Playwrights conference up there, where we, where that play that I was going mm-hmm. through town with, but uh, we we opened the festival that year, and um, that's where we met. So, and they were and not only good guys, but really uh, fun to work with. And you and you and once we got going, we had a couple of uh, uh, shots to work together, which was mm-hmm. like really good. But, you know, it's good when people are looking out for you because uh, the business is like very difficult. Uh, and when people are looking out for you, as well as, you know, your your buddies and know what the scoop is, uh, then you, you know, you, you're fortunate to have those guys as friends. You're lucky you're all good, too, because it's mm-hmm. it's it's hard to help each other out or recommend someone. But if everybody's good, those, you know, all three of you. So. It's not crazy that you would all be in another movie or that you would work together because you, sh- you keep bringing yeah. bringing it, which is hard to do. It's all about work, the work. Right? Yeah, just keep working. Yeah, yeah keep having having and having a good time doing it. Our theme here, uh, casually SNL, and uh, you hosted five times. It's very rare. Five o'clock to host five times. Five o'clock. You and John Goodman and a couple others. When you host that show, as you know, you got to pretty much cold read 55 scripts over four hours basically yes. <laughs> and i remember yes. thinking at the yes. time when you came in in 86 or 87 damn this guy can cold read was it were you known for that but you were like nailing it you know over and over again i don't you know pretty cool to 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 watch as a young performer well it was a lot of fun to sit in that room with all you crazy people and uh and and have that pile of scripts in front of you and just go through them. Uh, I mean, that that's like, uh, you know, the opportunity to have everybody there pitching what they thought was best, best and what you felt comfortable with. That's the main thing. I think that's key, right, for, would you say, like for the hosts uh, to be comfortable with all that material, One, you know, pick the ones that are the ones – uh, that suit you best. It's a lucky thing, like to have that um, pack of, you know, troubadours all sitting around the table. You know, <laughs> it's like old uh, school showbiz, kind of. Yeah, old school. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I could imagine what it was like. You know, when the Marx Brothers were running around all the theaters trying out material. You know, that that would be the same kind of uh, thing. They 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 just go do. They suffer people through uh, two hours or three hours of material and then pick the ones that they like best. Yeah, Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin uh, did some TV shows in there, Don Pardo show me, they said to me. And they would just go up to the director and cut his tie off with a scissor. They, You know, this is Jerry <laughs> Lewis in the 50s. And they would both just push yeah. the piano over, like destroy the piano. They were the anarchists then, the <laughs> crazy people. But one thing about you, I have to say, so we get to it, was on Hans and Franz, when we got you in there as like a pit bull, <laughs> over the top Austrian guy who was out of his mind, and you kept, we would berate the audience, the imaginary, and you would start berating them, and then you start attacking the camera, and we had to keep holding you back. <laughs> that was one of the funniest moments I had on that show oh, with great. you in that sketch. Yeah, oh, hysterical. Because you committed so fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes the task of the director for me is, hold, you know, sitting on me, holding me back, get me away from the, just try to <laughs> turn the burners down a little bit, you know, once I get going, I guess that's what happens. 
Burners down. It still yeah. happens that way. Well, that's what Arnold Arnold told me about you. He said, you know, you you got to keep Danny on his feet. Keep Danny on his feet because his energy keep goes him on up. On a short leash. <laughs> a short yeah. leash. Otherwise, he gets going. He gets away at the leash, and you have to you <laughs> yeah. have to follow him yeah. and get him and bring him back into the scene because the emotions get so high with Danny. It's funny about about with Arnold. Arnold and I were thrust together by Ivan Reitman, who just passed yeah. away. Twins. Uh, he he uh, he called me and said, "How would you like to be Arnold Schwarzenegger's brother?" I said, "I mean, I'd jump at the chance." I thought that was a great idea. Once we got together, it was like we had a great chemistry. We breaking balls constant. It was like a kind of like you know, uh, you know, he's he's so formidable, you know, and like, and he's got a great sense of humor. He does. Oh have, yeah, like he's always. Doing all kinds of like you know crazy ass shit, and he always had a pack of guys around him like uh, Franco and and uh, well, Peter Franco Colombo, Franco Colombo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and all these guys and these other bodybuilders, and so it was like yes. a pack of it was like a pack of bros. It was similar, you know, going into like that with the you know as a host of Saturday Night Live, going into this pack of like crazy people that mm-hmm. were always you know. <laughs> That had a second hand, a shorthand, and and uh, and got along the way you guys did. I don't, you know, at least when when I was around you, we were always, you know, fucking around, having a good time. And so it was a similar kind of thing with uh, with Arnold. I'd go in, and, and there would all be these guys seriously pumping iron and doing shit, and you know, talking about, you know, and I just like you know when you get protein the powder, all of a sudden. Uh, a kind of a wrecking ball comes in and starts banging into, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Were they going to do a triplets? Yeah, we were going to do it. And then uh, two, this is a, I, I always go by the Super Bowl because it was, I was in Atlanta <laughs> uh, doing a movie and, uh, and uh, it was Super Bowl Sunday and I was just get getting over COVID. Mm-hmm. I was stuck in a room for two weeks and, mm. and uh, the news came that Ivan passed away on that day. And so this is going to be three, this is three years now that he's gone Two, yeah, three years, two years. Yeah. Two okay. Months. Brilliant director. Yeah. It was a drag. Um, he was, uh, you know, he's a lot of fun and, uh, and uh, made made a big difference in my life. Well, yeah, I was told uh, that but we were yeah. going to do triplets. Oh, we were going to do triplets. We had a we had a script going. Everything was going, and then when he passed, uh, his family didn't want to continue with doing it. So we're oh. Arnold and I are working on other things together. Oh, good. And you know oh, that's awesome. We love yeah. Arnold. You know, the way and things. I, yeah. yeah, he's a he's a cool guy. He's, he's a good guy. Tracy Morgan was going to come in. I'll put a baby in there. <laughs> That's, you know, he's so funny. I had a, no, we, had a, we had a great Zoom together, and he was just off the charts. Bananas. Hysterical. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that energy in there. Mr. Been like, D, it don't get any that, easy. That's that. You know, that's the way, you know, the way things, things, things go, you know, like, um, they, you know, you have to always adjust as like we, we do. Uh, so. Did you have the role that got away, Danny? Uh, uh, or maybe a conflict. He had, he had to do another movie instead. No, I, and, you I, know, choices. I, uh, that I couldn't do. I hadn't had one of those that, that was uh, really substantial that, you know, you could look back and say, you know, no, I'm, I've had roles that I desperately wanted and got, which we, I got, I had to work hard to get. Mm. Uh, if you can't imagine, you know, how everybody holds out, you know, you, you get a part and a, somebody says, the last minute you get a part and, and it's the one you wanted. And, and that that's really, uh, 
the ones I think about. The ones that got away, I don't know. I can't, you know. Were you going to be Costanza? Oh, no, no. I think, like, you mean like in uh, Seinfeld? Yeah. No, I I wasn't. I, I, they they oh, okay. they just uh, yeah. Uh, when uh, yeah, I was still. I don't know what I was doing at the time. I I when when mid nineties. But I did a movie. Yeah. I did a movie called The Ratings Game, which is uh, was done for Showtime. It was the first movie that I directed, and. And I cast in that movie as a, it was his, one of his first things on camera, Jerry Seinfeld. I don't know if he d- had done anything before this, mm-hmm. but I cast him as a, an agent. And coincidentally, the, there were a couple of like character, really wild characters in the movie. I cast Michael Richards in the same movie. Oh, weird. really? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that they would <laughs> later be teamed up in uh, Seinfeld, but this was like yeah. in, um, it was in 83. When mm-hmm. did Seinfeld go on? Like 90, 93, yeah. two, three, four. I'm sorry. Something so, like that. So, yeah. so 10 years earlier, I did a movie called the ratings game. And, um, uh, both Jerry Seinfeld and Michael Richards were in it. Did Jerry ask you questions of how to direct? He hey. goes, how do you want me? How do you want me to play this scene? Did he ever say no, that to you? No, I don't. I, <laughs> uh, yeah. He's pretty kind of serious in real life. I think, by the way, which Batman did you work with? I can't remember. Batman returns. Who was the Batman again? Oh, it was Michael. Oh no. that Oh, Michael. I love my. I do. I'm not just because you're on our show right now. I love your penguin. I loved it. Your Thank your you. Oswald Thank penguin. You. I thought. Didn't you have fun I doing had that? Fun I with mean, it. your your get up oh, yeah. was so crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had I had fun doing that. That was a uh, uh, that was one of the ones that I really wanted, and I I you know and I met Tim and uh, we had a great you know, a conversation about it. And I knew he had done a lot of drawings and we sat in his office and uh, looked at it. And I really, really wanted to play that. And he, the makeup was the first makeup was, I was in the chair for almost five hours. And then the, we got it down mm-hmm. to three, but we stayed around mm-hmm. three, three and a, three, three and change. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. And it was the thing about, I liked about, that was, you know, I like I said, I like to go big, <laughs> and yeah. and boy, oh boy, Oswald was written like an opera. I mean, he could go, he could take this guy, yeah. you know. I mean, he just was, he was slapping his flippers off the walls, baby. You know, I mean, uh, your bird we cannot will fly. Attack. Yeah, he was, he was the you wicked know. witch. He was all of it, all in one. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. Crazy that was great. Character. It's odd. It's odd. Yeah, and that was after. Okay, that was after. See, I'd work with. I did the. You know, we did romancing the stone, jewel of the Nile, great, and then great. war of the roses yeah. with Michael and Kathleen huge, and I. Huge. I was just about yeah. thinking about what we were going to do again, because I was trying to. Uh, pull a Fritz Lang, you know, where you, <laughs> as a director, you cast, yeah. you know, the same people in, oh, yeah. in the, in all of your movies, but they play different mm-hmm. parts. And, mm-hmm. and then Batman came along and it's odd the way things, you know, emerge. Most of the movies that I've done, um, you know, came, came out of the blue and I was very, you're very fortunate. You know, I was, I was going to direct a pilot in, uh, in, I was sitting in the, in the commissary of Paramount. And, and uh, I was just about to make the deal. Like with, oh, I was talking to the writer and I was talking to the producer and it was at Paramount and I was going to be the, I, I was directing this pilot and, and uh, I had a, a yellow pad, pad full of notes, <laughs> you know, about the pilot mm-hmm. script. And I knew I was getting really steely daggers from the, 
writer, <laughs> who was also the producer. And a woman, this was in the days we didn't have cell phones and stuff. A woman from the, like the commissary, I was in the commissary all the time because the taxi, we, that's where we shot taxi. She came over to me and she said, you have a phone call. It was like the old Hollywood day. She didn't bring it to the table, but I, I got up and went over to where the phone was. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, it was, it was Michael Douglas. Mm. And, hey. and, and, uh, he rescued me from doing that pilot because we had shot romancing the stone already. No, yes. Romancing the stone. And he said, what are you doing? I heard you're going to do a pilot. And I said, yeah, man, I'm struggling through this meeting right now. He said, well, you can't do that. You gotta, we got to go on the road, man. We're going all over the world to promote the movie. And I said, I love you, baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, get me out of here. Uh, Any, I, said, I love you. You rescued my ass. All right, I got a question. Go. Did you ever go see, you were on a show called Taxi, you might not remember, but did you ever see uh, Andy Kaufman go do stand-up, just like at the comedy store? Yeah. And how was I that? And, that was that was bizarre. Yeah, was bizarre. Cool. Yeah. But I went to see him do that, and I saw him, and I went out to eat at the restaurant. He waited, he busboyed <laughs> out in the valley. Uh, it was- uh, <laughs> After he was on was, taxi. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, while he was on the show, <laughs> he busboyed out in. Uh, I love it. On, uh, I, I think it, I'm not sure the, of the name of the deli. Yeah, it was a good. Uh, Might have been Katz's. No, no. What the hell? In in the Carnegie's. valley, it wasn't <laughs> Art's Deli. It was the mm-hmm. other one. It's closed now. But Jerry's. Out in it was on San. Is it on Ventura Boulevard? Jerry's is yeah. Jerry's yeah. That yeah. was that was that was probably that yeah. might have been it. Yeah. Jerry's yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> and you know we went out. We had like a couple of us from the show. I think Tony might have been with me. Uh, Judd might have come. Uh, we just one night went out and uh, we knew he was working, and so we we went and ate, and uh, you know. Had conversations with him, like you would have with the bus boy. <laughs> no, not Andy. Andy's nowhere around. <laughs> All right, he's the bus boy. Now. He was the bus boy. <laughs> it was like really great. I mean that 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 was that guy was like, uh, yeah. We had some fun. His dressing was right next to mine. We would. Um, he was uh, he he was hysterical. One day, uh, somebody was delivering a package. And it was a woman, and he started yelling at her because she she was, uh, I don't know, UPS, or I can't remember what, the, maybe right. it was the government. I don't know what the fuck it was, but she's walking in. She's got a uniform on. She's delivering a package to somebody, and he tells <laughs> her that she should be home. You know, t- she's taking a man's job, and he <laughs> right. booked her into a wrestling match. Yeah. I was there for that one. And right wow. in the hallway. But, both of them turning red, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> choke holes. <laughs> we had to break them apart a couple of times. He was so really? serious woman. about that shit. You could do yeah. that crazy days. about that. Shit. I don't think you could actually. I mean, you could do that. You could do. Yeah, I don't know. There was no like, you know. Again, if that was a, it was that was today. Somebody would be out with a cell phone, and the next Ooh. thing you know, it would be online. And people oh, yeah. would comment about it and they would mm-hmm. say, you know, but I'll tell you, the woman that he was fighting was as big as he was. And, <laughs> and she did a good job, man. He really? had his ass down big time. You know, it was, it was, uh, I don't know if Tony, I always wondered if Tony always had a little camera with him dancing. And I was wondering if he, you know, I had one of those little Oh, he's had a good picture. Like eight millimeter. Sucks, you can't get. Did, did were you cast before Andy? Were you cast first, or did you have any hand in no, the casting? No, I think Andy might have been cast. I was. I was the last. I think I might have been one of the last members to be cast. Uh, and the the uh, the the story was that I was told later was that my part was actually written as a 
like a voice that came over the loudspeaker, oh, yeah. like uh-huh. kind of like Carlton the doorman. Yeah, they I were remember Carlton all the doorman. involved in that guy, and uh, and then uh, ultimately, you know, I came in and and did my famous audition where I I said uh, you know, I said to them before I they just introduced me, and I said to Brooks and Weinberger and. Dan, Stan, Dan, Dave Davis was there. All the guys sitting around. I said, one thing I want to know before I start, who wrote this shit? And I threw it on the table. <laughs> and, and it was like a split second of like, am I going to get thrown out? Not even, you know, a nanosecond. Yeah, where they of didn't course. Do it, and then they just fucking pissed themselves. Right? And then it was one of those auditions where you, you couldn't say anything. You couldn't do anything wrong. I'd say, and... And I'd get a laugh. Oh, you know, I it, love it. It wasn't, yeah, it was the, uh, that was Riga. Joel. The, the casting director was Joel Thurm. He, oh, yeah. he said, you got to oh, come and do this. You gotta, you know, and I, I said, yeah, man. Okay, cool. What a fucking score. That what was a, such what a, a score. That was, yeah. yeah what Jesus. was weirder, working with Andy Kaufman on Taxi or then doing The Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey doing Andy Kaufman? <laughs> I think working with Jim was, it was like really off the charts. That was the most fun. Like I've had fun like on. Sure. I'm really fortunate. I had fun on a lot of the movies. You know, I never had one of those, oh, fuck, that was awful movies. I always had these like really quirky kind of things. And being on the set with Jim Carrey. Sorry about that. Hello, Jim. Carrey was, oh, oh, it is Jim. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, <laughs> he was like in so far in, you know, the, all the stuff. We saw yeah. the documentary. Mm-hmm. I was producing that movie. And so my, I, but also playing God Rest His Soul, George Shapiro. Uh, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, he was busting my balls constantly. And, you know, and Milos is then, see, it's infectious because then what would happen? We were having fun. But Milo should go to me. You gotta go to Madman's trailer. I'm losing time. My God, I gotta get. The, you know, I am. The studio is gonna be on my ass. Yeah. And I'm going. And, uh, Andy, uh, Jim, uh, <laughs> Tony, Tony, you know what I mean? come on out. And he's gone. You know, but it was fun. It was even though it was like you know, and I've got a lot of friends who worked on that movie, and we still talk about that experience because Pam Abdi was my assistant mm-hmm. at the time. Uh, she was there and knowing that I was going through what was going on. I mean, he did things like, he, he, okay, we're acting in the movie, but I'm also the producer, <laughs> one of the producers of the movie. Mm-hmm. And so he, he would get mad at the, and he, like he, he pulled his car up to my trailer and went up, you know, he's got the little metal steps yeah, he jammed his the car up, put it in gear or something, <laughs> locked it, took the keys. I couldn't get out of my trail. <laughs> the teamsters had to come with a crane to get the car. You know, it was like one of those. Oh. Uh, it was a crazy, crazy time. I, I love come in Jim Carrey. I, yeah, Jim Carrey is fucking great. Just, just the fact that he committed that. Did he get nominated for Best Actor for that? Or no, no, I don't know. He, we had a really brilliant. Uh, it was a he, yeah. He was brilliant in that part. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and, and seriously uh, uh, would turn it on and off when he wanted. So that was like mm-hmm. one of those things where whenever he came to the set, he was always in character. But if you see mm-hmm. him like, you know, you know, off, oh. like I went to his house yeah. or something like that for a, mm-hmm. you know, some, he was like cool he wasn't you know he wasn't like a serial killer off the yeah (laughs) yeah he's very he's sort of a quiet sweet guy yeah quiet sweet guy but then turned into like tony clifton i love it which was like tony clifton is a whole other that was (laughs) fucked up yeah Uh, (laughs) we 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 shot at a place called chasen's down on uh, i remember that that place okay he spread, mm-hmm. there was some kind of, I don't know, union strike or something. There was something going on. He wrote like 
big letters like, you know, in red ink, I mean, red spray paint uh, all over the building. I had, I had, to, I had to, re, to paint, I had to repaint the entire building. <laughs> ah. It's like a Farley. It's like having a crazy person on the like, set. Like, like yeah, Chris, ah. I, I, I can't imagine what it was. I, I, I always loved Chris and uh, uh, because he would take it to that, you know, Oh yeah, he was always the one. Oh my went. god, yeah. Yeah, same kind of thing. Guys. Just a lot of attention, a lot of craziness, and uh, Chris, lovable, sweet guy like Jim. I mean, just but they really liven things up. There's always a story after the fact. There's always a story. Dana, I got to ask da- Danny about uh, always an, an always sunny question because we can't let you go without talking about always sunny. Uh, one question of mine is. I don't see all the episodes, but I see a lot of it on Instagram, which I don't know if you know this, but when they show TikTok and Instagram clips, they're always so fucking filthy. I'm like, are these from the real show? Are they getting away with all this stuff? <laughs> are they filthy? I don't know. I don't. I, don't I mean, like just they're very R rated. And I thought, yeah, the show. Oh, man, is a little bit- I mean, people love that fucking show. They love yeah, it. The show is a little, uh, you know, I don't know <laughs> a little. what you're talking about, but uh, we have had some. Um, innuendos, well, they're hilarious. I guess, yeah, yeah. There's some innuendos for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if they're even innuendos. They're just yeah. uh, straight ahead. But yeah, they're. It's so funny, and uh, it's it's such a long run. It's a, um, it sounds like a gift. I'm sure. Just yeah, like it is a gift. Being with fun, they all look fun as shit. I don't know yeah, everybody that well, but no, they're all they're all. You know, uh, uh, when I got the show. Uh, that you know, Landgraf was my buddy, and he showed FX me this boss, show, right? Yeah, forget yeah. FX. Uh, and then I met them, and they were, you know, just the way they are, <laughs> and uh, the same cat, you know, the three yeah. oddballs. Mm-hmm. And then I met Caitlin, and she's she's like hysterical, she's h- hilarious. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. but um, yeah, they're they're a lot of fun to go to work with, you know. Yeah. It's good. To, it's oh, a good job. Sure. It's and been it on keeps, there forever. Keeps giving. Keeps giving. And now Matilda, we have to talk about. Yeah. Matilda oh. came to me. Yeah. Which you directed the movie. I did. I directed the movie and, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I, I saw Mara Wilson in, in, uh, in, uh, the, uh, uh, movie, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. And, oh, uh, she was yeah. a little bit older when I met her perfect for Matilda and we shot the movie and it, it it was great. We had a great time. That was like, that was fun. That was a, a hundred, hundreds of kids. There was no CG. Mm-hmm. We, we added kids and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. This was yeah. all real kids. It was really mm-hmm. great. Me on the stage with a bullhorn. Yeah. Do this, do that. You know, like, mm-hmm. and, and uh, get the finger out of your nose. We're shooting. Okay. Wrangling let's go. cats. Yeah. yeah. Wrangling. Yeah. And so now we're doing it on, uh, we, we've taken the sound out. You know, you've seen these things. Uh, everybody's does it with ET and does it with mm-hmm. Star Wars and does it with Back to the Future. I, yes. I took the soundtrack out, and David Newman is going to conduct the the Philharmonic. Uh, it's a symphony. Oh, okay, orchestra, okay, yeah. New Jersey Symphony Orchestra, mm-hmm. and we're doing that um, on March twenty second in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. The, at the state theater in new brunswick and it's really exciting to do because here's the thing you take the sound out okay the, mm-hmm. not just the music out but i mm-hmm. i narrate the movie as well as play a part in it mm-hmm. so when yeah. i when i'm narrating i'm on stage actually with the symphony orchestra it's really okay intimidating yeah. but it's really a lot of fun yeah and and you're watching the you know, the streamer go by on, I got a little monitor with the movie. He's conducting mm-hmm. the score. The people are watching the, the movie. Oh. I've got a brand new print and it's just beautiful. The print is like gorgeous. And, wow. um, and then when the stream, when it's my turn to narrate a talk, you know, you have to, he conducts, it's like being conducted. Over it? You talk over it? Yeah. Well, in the movie, I play the part of Wormwood. Mr. Wormwood, and I also mm-hmm. narrate the movie. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. I tried to find somebody to narrate the movie, but I, I being the egotist I am, I couldn't. Yeah, I embarrassing. With anybody else? Cast yourself. <laughs> like, cast myself. <laughs> and uh, and it's kind of a trip to see. You know, you play the part, you narrated the movie, and I've got uh, Rhea. Of course, plays Mrs. Wormwood. She's going to come on the twenty second. Great. And mm-hmm. uh, and I've got Pam Ferris coming over from England. She played the Trunchbull. It's really astounding yes. how many kids loved the Miss Trunchbull. Trunchbull. Miss, Miss Trunchbull. Miss Trunchbull. She was like yeah, great, right. really, really, yeah. really yes. tough. And Mara's By the way, I don't be- hear about a lot of these things, Danny. You don't hear about the the symphony, maybe with a Star Wars or something, but this is a yeah. really interesting is, like, thing to unique. do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Fun, fun, challenging situation. Yeah, it's... Uh, and I... I David Newman, who wrote the score, we've we've done this once before. We did it once before. Uh, we did it a few years ago uh, with a, a orchestra from the East Coast, not not New Jersey, and it worked out really great. It's fun. It's a uh, it's a it's a fun night because you get to you know, but but you're right. Usually it's done with uh, more uh, like Back to the Futurey. Kind of mm-hmm. ET blockbuster crazy movies. This one is um, it's got a lot of music in it, so it's fun. Who who wrote the score? David Newman. He's oh, David uh, he's Newman, one of the yeah the Newman, yeah the Newman uh, pack. There's a, well, as soon as the Newmans were born, the father was uh, the head of uh, 20th Century Fox Music. Did all the a lot of the mm-hmm. scores of all the old movies that we love, yeah. and his brother. Mm-hmm. They have the whole, you always see the Newman name on. And then David, David scores Thomas Newman, Randy Newman. They're all related, these guys. They were all wow. like, well, as soon as they're born, they give them a violin or a put, or stick them <laughs> little babies. In. The first thing the Newmans do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even even uh, Eric Newman is his son, Randy's son produces Narcos, a lot of movies. So there you go. everyone's yeah. in the biz. Yeah. Everybody's in the biz. Uh, so mm. this should be a really good night. Sounds uh, great. Yeah. Sounds if you are you guys in the East Coast? Are you are you here? Sometimes we are uh, in California. But if I was out okay. there, I'd crash that party. Yeah, crash Definitely. that party because we're gonna have. Uh, yeah, uh, I've never the State Theater in New Brunswick is uh, new for me. I've never been there. But I think the I Phil- played the, there. The uh, <laughs> Symphony Orchestra. You did. Mm. Yeah. I believe so. How many it's seats nice, is that about? Two thousand, twenty five hundred, eighteen hundred. Okay, I think I played there. Yeah, yeah. It's um, great, theater. great theater. This is would be really fun. I love live music and live symphony orchestra. It's just and then to have you there yeah, narrating and score. seeing the film. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, I would go see it. Everybody it's package yeah. deal. <laughs> Are you on the East Coast right now, Danny? Yeah, I'm on the West Coast. We're probably right around the corner from West Coast. Coast. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, I'll wave. Anyway, it's been a pleasure, Danny. Good luck with this. Thanks. This has been a presentation of Odyssey. Please follow, subscribe, leave a like, a review, all the stuff. Smash that button, whatever it is, wherever you get your podcasts. Fly on the Wall is executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Jenna Weiss Berman of Odyssey, Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment, and Heather Santoro. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman.